Number three, I want to start here tonight, obviously, um, um, this week coming into the Thanksgiving, I, I want to just be remind, I just want to remind everybody of our need to be thankful. Lord, uh, Lord uh, has put that in the Christian's life, it's a, it's a difference between a, a Christian who's right with God and bearing much fruit, and even a Christian who's carnal, and it's definitely the difference between a Christian who loves God and a sinner. A sinner's not thankful for anything God has done for them. In fact, we're going to read that tonight. It's one of the problems in this last day we're living in. Look what it says here. It says, 2 Timothy 3 and verse number 1, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despiser of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Note verse number 2, he says they're unthankful. That's going to be one of the marks, many marks, that you can see in the generation we're living in. Go to Romans chapter number 1. Romans 1. Christian, let me say something to you. Good times, bad times, you ought to be thankful. Somehow, it ain't always easy. It ain't always easy. To be thankful. There's things that come in our life that make it very difficult. Difficult. You lose a loved one. It's difficult to be thankful. But you ought to be thankful for the time you had with them. That's tough. We see uh, Job's attitude uh, about it. He said, Lord giveth, Lord taketh away. I don't understand all that. I'll be honest with you. I don't understand all I have that down. But we need to be cautioned against becoming unthankful because I want you to see the de degeneration in Romans chapter number 1. Watch what it says here. Paul says in verse 16, he says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and, to, and also to the Greek. For in is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, The just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now what, watch what it says about these men it's talking about. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now watch verse number 21. I want you to see the turning point in this degeneration that leads to a reprobate life. Now Christian, if I can warn you against something and encourage you about something at the same time, you need to be careful. I want you to see the turning point that's listed in Romans chapter number 1. Look at verse number 21. Because that when they knew God. Now watch. Do you know God? Watch the degeneration. Watch the degeneration. He says for. Uh, because that when they knew God. They glorified him not as God. Neither were what? The mark of a person at the beginning of the degeneration of life, that the Bible says they that do such thing are worthy of death, the last verse of this, the, the very beginning of their falling away began with not glorifying God and not being thankful. Christian, listen. There's tough times that come to us just like it does the world. You think the world goes through stuff and we don't? The difference is, we have a Father. Listen, we have a heavenly Father above with eyes full of mercy and a heart full of love. 
He really cares when your heart is brought low. So consider the lilies, and then you will know. Listen, listen. We don't even sorrow like people who don't have hope. When one of us die, the Bible says precious are the death of the saints in the sight of the Lord. To him is a precious thing, those that have loved him and served him. It may not be that way to us because we have a sorrow for them leaving. But listen, it's not. Our God offers hope and we should not become unthankful. The first stage of this degeneration, it shows you we are heading for a reprobate society. We are heading that direction because we are absolutely unthankful. You ever notice how once Halloween hits, this thing goes on a fast track and absolutely skips the idea of being thankful? Right? We just go from one covetous practice to the next covetous practice in a flash, just like that. And they completely skip the whole thankful thing. Completely. It's about money to them. This time of the year is about money to them. They're not thankful to God for providing food. They're not thankful for Him getting them through the fall uh, and, and, and providing through the winter and having the, the, the harvest that we need, having the clothes that we need. We are, we are uh, like in this country, we are like a bunch of spoiled, rotten brats. That's what we are. We got so much. Listen, I'm not saying everybody. I, I don't want to be that way. I, I resist it. But we have so much. We have so much in this nation to be thankful for. We have so much more than other nations even to be thankful. The Bible says, to whom much is given, much shall be required. And this nation is given much more than these other nations. I'm talking about in the light of freedom in the light of being able to uh, worship freely, and I, in the light of being able to go down to a grocery store, Kenny and them occasionally, over in Papua New Guinea, Eric and them, they'll send me pictures now. They got some modern places. Well, you go down, you go to McDonald's. You don't like McDonald's, you can go to Wendy's. You don't like Wendy's, you can go to Arby's. You don't like Arby's, you like to go to Cookout. You don't like Cookout, you can go to Zaxby's. You don't like uh, Zaxby's, you, could, uh, you can go to Domino's. You don't like Domino's, you can have... Uh, Pizza Hut. You don't like Pizza Hut? You can go to Little Caesars. I mean, we can just go on and on. You don't like the uh, McDonald's on this side of town? You can go to McDonald's on the other side of town. You don't like none of them? You want to sit down? I mean, you can go to the Mexican restaurant. You, there ain't nothing. To, I hate it when people say ain't nothing in Walter, but really, hey, there's a Mexican restaurant. I don't like that. Okay, all right. Well, how about IHOP? I don't like IHOP. Well, how about a little Chinese? I can't stand that place either. It's dirty. But listen, look, but listen. Look, look how I'm sounding. Do you see how I'm sounding? There are so many people who don't have what we have. And they are much more thankful than we are. And it shows we, we have become closer and closer to a reprobate society. A society that is very ungrateful. Listen, my boss occasionally, I, I, I don't necessarily uh, like the things my boss does. I'll be honest with you, I don't even necessarily like my boss. Right? I'm not going to go any further on that, but he, he doesn't always do things with integrity, as far as I can see. But I'm going to tell you what. He bought us dinner on Friday, lunch on Friday. I don't know of another person that told him thank you except for me. I make sure when they do anything for us, because we don't, listen, they don't have to do any of it. I make sure I'm the first in his office, regardless of what I think. I'm the first in his office to say thank you. I appreciate you buying food for us. Listen, this society is so unthankful. And I listen, I heard the conversation. Some of them say, well, they owe that to us. They should do that for us. We live in such a spoiled, rotten, entitled society. They think somebody owes you something, and you didn't even work a full day, and you think somebody owes you food? Here, he, he had a safety day. Look, let me show you how unthankful. 
My, I hope, if my employee, uh, the people I work with, it'll be all right. It'll be all right. I'll take the heat. Listen. He allowed us to leave two hours early on the clock and paid for. And don't you know there's some people who wasn't satisfied with that. Bought us dinner. We didn't do any production all day long. We had a safety rodeo, which he provided rewards for the top three winners. A full day off for the winner, half day off for the second place, and third place in the rodeo time-wise got to pick an item out of line. Then he gave everybody in the building free food. I ain't talking about junk food either. They had wings and the big Bubba burgers and all the fixings and all this other stuff and then sent you home two hours early with pay and still some people weren't happy. We, listen, we live in a society that is unthankful. Unthankful. Very unthankful. As brethren, we need to be very careful we don't become unthankful because that's what this society is made up of. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. First stage in a reprobate life is unthankfulness. You can see that not giving glory to God and unthankfulness. Look at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. 1 Thessalonians 5. Bucky was here for Sunday school. And I'm going to be with, uh, right after that, the next verse, number 18. He quoted this verse, pray without ceasing. The next verse, in verse 18, says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Can I encourage you about something and challenge you on something this week? Can I just challenge you? And if you fail, like I'm likely to do the first day, I encourage you to finish and see how little you can do this week. Will you go one week without murmuring and complaining? Will you try to go one week in honor to God for what He's done for you without murmuring and complaining about anything? Catch yourself when you start. Say, for your glory and your honor, Lord, I'm not going to do it. Because that, said, that book says, in everything, give thanks. That's hard. That's hard. Look what he says here again. He says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Brother, you, we talked about that this morning. What does God want me to do? There's some things in the Bible. People always searching for this mystical, weird uh, I need a sign because I need to know the will of God for my life, right? This extra biblical experience they're looking for. I, we talked to a man, me and Cappy, this past week, was looking for that. And I said, you're not going to find it. Oh, it's a feeling. When I got saved, and since I've been saved, this morning standing at the choir, I listened. It, over, it was oh, My cup was running over. My cup was running over. But let me say something to you. The will of God for your life is for you to be a thankful person. That's very clear in the scriptures. How thankful are you? How thankful are you? Do you let a day go by without thanking God for something? I agree with Bucky. First thing you should be thankful for when you get up in the morning is the fact he got you through the night. Listen, we got so much to be thankful for. First thing we can be thankful for, and if you can't say amen here, something's wrong with you, we can be thankful that he sent us a Savior. We can be thankful of that. Listen, he sent us a Savior. I think about who I am and what I've done and what I deserve. Uh, listen, they don't, none of us deserve anything, but he sent you a Savior, you a Savior. He sent them to you, Philip. He sent a Savior to you. 
who are you after what you put your eyes on and after what you thought, who are you that he would love you and want to save you? But he does. And so we should be thankful for that. Colossians chapter 1, look at verse number 9. For this cause also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might um, be filled with all knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you might walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing and being fruitful unto every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power and to all patience and Long suffering with joyfulness. Watch what he says. Giving thanks unto the Father. What are we going to give thanks unto the Father for? The scriptures tells you one thing here that you should be thankful for. Who hath made us meet? What does the word meet? M E E. We're talking about words with uh, multiple meanings this morning. What does the word meet mean in the passage? Meet has double meaning. It doesn't say He caused us to meet somebody. It said He has made us meet. What does it mean? The word meet has double meaning. One means I'm going to meet somebody at the store. I'm going to go and be where they're at at the same time. The other word meet means worthy. Worthy. Meet means worthy. So look at what it says. He's... He hath made us meet. He's made us worthy. We're not worthy. He made us worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. How? Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us unto the kingdom of His dear Son in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sin. If there's one thing that you are to be thankful for, and you are to be given thanks to the Father for. That answers our question about Jesus. Do we pray to Jesus? Okay. Go ahead. Do we pray for the whole, to the Holy Spirit? Okay. Go ahead. Do we pray to the Father? That's what he just said. Giving thanks to the Father. They're all the same, y'all. We pray, Jesus said, whatsoever you ask in my name. Right? But notice, giving thanks. Can you not thank God that He sent His Son to die for your sin? You know what I appreciate about testimonies we heard this morning? Multitudes of people that were here this morning, in their heart, even some talked to me afterwards. David, I appreciate him coming out. He had a question. He didn't want to ask it out loud. He was afraid he was going to stump me. Stump the chump. But, um, but I answered him on the porch out there. It was a blessing. But I was thankful to see people glad to be saved. I've never seen anybody who was genuinely saved, genuinely blood-bought, who regretted it. I've never seen any. I've never seen one. I've seen some that made uh, professions, shallow professions. I've seen some miserable about the way they were living. I've seen Christians that were miserable in their sins And they were still thankful they were saved. (laughs) Isn't that crazy? Listen, we ought to be thankful for what God did for us. Another thing we absolutely should be thankful for, go to Colossians chapter 3. One thing I am so thankful for being at this church is my brethren. Man, I am so thankful for my brethren. If you can't thank the Lord for anything, you should definitely thank Him for His Son and the people He gave you, the brothers and sisters in Christ He gave you. Colossians chapter number 3, look at verse number 14. And above all things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your heart, uh, uh, to which you're, also, uh, you're called in one body, and be you what? Be you thankful. You know what he says in the middle of all this? He says, look, I want you to have charity towards your brethren. I want you to have a fervent charity towards your brethren. And in the midst of that charity, it should involve thankfulness. Are you thankful for the brethren that God has given? Go to Philippians, Philippians chapter number 1. I am so thankful. Listen, a lot of people who profess to know Jesus... Uh, have, have, 
have really, really done some things that bother me and that have hurt me really bad in the sense that, that I, I just really could not believe a Christian would do something like that. But it's not the majority. Let me say something to you. God has given us a wonderful gift in the brethren. And I think a lot of times we get hurt because we forget that we have the same sins the rest of the people have sitting among us. That's why we get hurt. We get hurt because somebody blows up at us and gets angry with us and says something they shouldn't say out of line and we forget that we have done that time and time again ourselves. We forget that we have thought evil about our brethren. We forget that. It's like I was talking to my wife this morning. It's amazing, growing up, growing up, <laughs> my daddy won't care if I say this. I love my daddy, and he, he won't care if I say this. But we was talking about this whole thing about smoking at church, right? You know, I, I, I think it's a horrible testimony for people to be out in the parking lot smoking, but some people come and they don't know no better, they ain't been around the truth, and it's the life they're living, they're not even saved, and they struggle. But you ought to have enough respect not to do it in the parking lot of the church, right? I think you should, right? But let me show you how it is. With no thought to the fact that some people in that church may have just gotten saved and don't understand. My daddy would drive by churches and say, look at that, standing out front, sucking on a cigarette, a bunch of hypocrites. Now he didn't know who it was. He didn't know if they were freshly saved. He didn't know the story behind their lives. But one thing I knew, one thing I knew, my daddy had some sins in his life that I was very well aware of. That he didn't want to talk about. Isn't that crazy how that works? We're all the same way, y'all. We have to be careful in our thoughts. I think the testimony of the church is hurt when that stuff goes on. But I think we need to be careful and love the brethren to the point where we're, we are looking out for their good. It's a, it's a balance. It's a balance of life. And listen, I learned it's hard sometimes. To, if you're, but if you're going to love somebody, you're going to have to show charity toward them. You're going to have to be long-suffering toward them. You're going to have to wait on the Holy Spirit to deal with that hard. Look what it says in Philippians chapter number 1. He said, Paul and Timotheus and the servant of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ Jesus that are at Philippi with the bishop and deacons, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from uh, the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he that had begun a good work in you shall, will perform it until the day of the Lord Jesus. Notice what he says in verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Listen, how do you feel about the brethren? Do you spend time thanking God for the brethren? Here's Bucky. I love him to death. Bucky is probably the most perfect person in our church, isn't he? He doesn't do anything wrong, ever. But let me say something to you, brother. If I'm such a scumbag that I can't look and see the character in you that I appreciate and tell my God, God, I thank you. I thank you for this. We need this in our church, and Bucky is a blessing to our church. Listen, why don't you get to a point, instead of always seeing the negative in people, why don't you get to the point where you see that there's some positive that we can thank God over? If, if you get to the point where you start looking for people that come here that are odd, that some that sing too loud, or some that do this or do that, right, in your mind, you're going to have to get to a point and realize this is a body of Christ. It is here to edify each other. That's why it's here. 
And so we have to put up with a lot of junk. And if we learn to do that, and we learn, when you pray for people, when you pray for... My prayer, I'm going to tell you how my prayer is for you guys. I mingle my prayer with thanksgiving. But I also mingle my prayer with things I know that you need to improve in your life if I'm I'm aware of it. It can't be just all negative, y'all. We have to thank God for the characteristics that are brought to the table. Listen, Paul said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Listen, how do you, I, I love brethren. I love saved people. I love being around them. I love fellowshipping with them. I love learning from them. I love encouraging them. And I love being encouraged by them. I thank God that there's some old timers that got my name on their prayer list and I don't even know it. And I ain't talking about just here. There's people that have your name on a prayer list somewhere and you don't even know it. I'm thankful for that. Uh, uh, Cappy said, I didn't know that was the bucky y'all were praying for. All this time he didn't put the pieces of the puzzle together. He knew you from when he was a little kid. He said, man, I didn't know that was the bucky. (laughs) Amen. Amen. Are you thankful for your brethren? Go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. I wish Jim was here. I could pick on him about preacher being able to finish on time. He's always, preacher, I got a date, man. You're going to have to hurry up and get that thing done. He's going to have to get back here so he can aggravate me. Look at this, uh, 1 Timothy 4, verse number 3. He says, um, let's start at 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly in the latter days, some shall depart from the uh, faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with what? thanksgiving of them that believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it be received with what? Now listen, I'm going to tell you something. When you're stuffing your face with that turkey and that ham or whatever you're going to eat, you got the stuffing and you got the cornbread, and let me tell you, when you got uh, cranberry sauce and you got a uh, 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 um, squash casserole and you got that was good. Mm. I know y'all don't like it, but I man, I take it all day long. And listen, you got uh, you got cornbread stuffing and you got you got uh, um, um, what else do we have? You, the pecan pie and apple pie and uh, cupcakes that look like turkeys and turkeys. That, well, never mind. Um, listen to me. Listen to me. You got all of that, and you're telling me there are people in countries that are fighting to have a bowl of rice a day, and you can't stop long enough to tell God thank you for providing for what He's done for you? And listen, that shouldn't be a one-year event. That should be a a multiple-time-a-day event. Them guys laugh at me sometime at work because I'll be eating a candy bar or something like that and I'll stop and give thanks for it. Excuse me for a second. Just a candy bar. I know. But I'm thankful for it. Listen, we need to be thankful for the Savior. We need to be thankful for the brethren. We need to be thankful for God's provision. He provides more than what we deserve. Let's go here. Go to 1 John, or 2 John, 2 John. Listen, there's a lot we could say about this subject. Go to 2 John. He says to the uh, elder, to the elder to the elect lady and her children, to whom I love in truth, not only I, I... not I only, but also all they that have known the truth, for the truth's sake which dwelleth in us, and shall be with us forever. Grace be unto you, and mercy and peace uh, from God uh, the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the, uh, the Son of the Father, in truth and in love. I rejoice greatly 
that I, uh, I found of thy children, that I found of thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. He says, Now I beseech thee, lady, not to, as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is uh, love, that we walk in, uh, after His commandments, and this is the commandment that, uh, as ye have heard from the beginning, you should walk in. He said there are many deceivers that have gone out into the world, and he goes on and talks, gives them a fair warning. Notice John here. You know what he's thankful for? He says on another occasion that he's thankful in chap, uh, John, uh, 3 John that his children, your children walk in truth. Listen. We should be thankful for our families. We should be thankful for the children He's given us. But oh, what a blessing the day that your children find salvation. That is something to greatly rejoice in. Your children find a salvation. I, I, I have lived long enough to see mine wander and some seem like they're almost ready to turn and put it away. That's a blessing. And I pray to God they'll throw in the towel. Listen, I was almost 21 years old when I finally just had to throw in the towel. Listen, I had praying grandparents. I had a praying daddy. I had many people praying for me at the church I grew up at. Many of them told me when I was a little boy, and I denied it all my life, all my Christian life. After I got saved, I went to Bible school. I went to Bible school not because I wanted to be a preacher. I went to Bible school because I didn't know what the Bible said. And I just wanted to learn it. And from a little kid, there was a woman in that church. When I was a little kid, she said, there's something different about you. She said, I think you're going to be a preacher one day. And I just kind of, you know, brushed it off, brushed it off. I got saved, that same lady. I met her at a church I grew up in. She says, well, are you going to be a preacher now? I said, no, I just intend to be a Christian, being faithful, went to Bible school, so I know what the Bible says. That's all I care about. Listen, here I am. I couldn't get away from it. But I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. I had a grandmother who prayed for me, a grandfather who prayed for me. I had a daddy who wept bitterly when I left the wrong way. I had a, church, a group of church people. And I guarantee you that lady went home and said, Dear God, please make him a preacher. She never forgot it. She never forgot it. After I got saved, she said, I've been praying that you'd be a preacher. It's amazing. Listen, we should love our families. We should appreciate those who, who uh, have labored for us. Listen, you got saved, you got saved, you got saved, you got saved. Listen, there's people that had to labor and pray for you to get saved. You ought to be thankful for that. That's a lot. It means a lot that somebody loves you enough to pray for you. That's a blessing. Let's finish right here. Two passages. Well, let's go to this one. We'll, we'll finish right here. Psalm 100. Don't be like the world and be unthankful this week. Please don't. Be thankful, genuinely thankful. You know, um, I, I'm glad there's nobody here who would criticize it. But you know what we did next door? There are people who would actually criticize how we did that. And honestly, what we did Sunday morning, this morning, I actually wanted to do over there. I'm thankful that that thing overflowed over here Sunday morning. Right? But I, I've heard people say, if you're going to have a day at the church of fun, just have a day at the church of fun. You need to leave all that scripture Bible stuff out and all that singing stuff out. And I said, there ain't no way we're coming without that. There's no point. There's no point in that. Do you think that I'm going to take an opportunity and I got lost people sitting right over there and one of my men... Uh, is not going to go and preach to them lost people. Or we have a ladies' meeting, and one of our ladies is not going to go and preach to the people that are going to show up and be lost. You're crazy. Is this not a, that's the difference between a social club and the church that Jesus Christ founded. The church is here for the sake of souls. The social club church is here to have fun. Listen, it ain't always fun, is it? 
It's not always fun, y'all. Let's be real. There are times when you're hurt and you're tired, you don't feel like being here. Let's just be real. The preacher's like that sometimes. But it's not about having fun. It's about opening the Word of God and getting a charge out of it, getting a field tank so we can go through the week. That's what it's about. Look at um, chapter 100, Psalms 100. This will sum up what I want to charge you for the week. He says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know ye the Lord that He is God and that it is He that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and to His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him and bless His name. Why? Why? Preacher, why should we do all that? What difference does it make? Why should we, why should we praise Him? Why should we be thankful? I'm glad you asked. Look what it says. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and His truth endureth to all generations. Listen, my brethren, please, this week, one thing you take away from this message, please do not go through this week without a thankful attitude. And it should be the life of a Christian every day. I'm so glad we have certain times that remind us <laughs> it's a shame that we have to have certain times to remind us. Thursday, the, what is it, the third Thursday and Wednesday, the fourth Thursday in, 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 in November, is that how it is? Why every year should it just be the fourth Thursday in November that we should be thankful. Listen, the Christian life should be a life of thankfulness. A life of thankfulness. Find something to be thankful for. Your plans don't work out, and I'm hoping they do, but if your plans don't work out, then you need to find something to be thankful for. I'm, I'm, I'm looking in the mirror. You know what I'm saying? Because God has a plan and He has a purpose. And we should be thankful for what He does in our lives. Amen? All right. Well, let's stand for prayer. Hope that was a blessing to you. and Hope you all have a good week.